invoice. Now if I come into the, no the next step which is payments and receipts. So let's do a few payments and receipts. So let's do go new and see the way we have three types of transactions. So why don't we do a payment first? And why don't we pay off the bill that we got? See the way we have a split screen here. See down at the bottom we know that on the 1st of September over here we have first on the 1st of September from the local merchant there's 1400 euros outstanding. So if I double click on that transaction see the way it shoots up to the top half of the screen. So we're basically saying that we're paying this particular bill and notice the way the date is the 18th. So we're saying that on the 18th to the 9th we're going to pay a bill to uh, and we're going to pay it from the current account. Again, um, this if it was a check number then this is where the reference would be relevant. So you put in the check number that you wrote. If, the, if, you're, it's a, if this is an electronic payment obviously there would be no reference there at all. Again the comment is not needed unless you have a very special thing that you want to say. One little thing there, usually when you pay bills a lot of farmers were, are good at looking for a discount. So if you put in get discount here and let's say that you, you knocked 100 euro off the bill. So put in 100 here and see the way it's putting in a, a, a bill here and if I save this at the bottom See the way I now have three lines. I have um, I have 600, 800, but I'm getting it's minus 100 to balance it off. And the actual amount of check that you're going to write is actually 1300. So don't forget that button there. When you're doing bills and invoices, you can you can track the discounts that you get when you knock a few quid off the overall bill that's outstanding, and that keeps the whole balance right. So that's how we're paying uh, a bill. So if I save that, it's looking for another. Um, payment. Now let's do a cash payment. This is obviously easier. So let's say from the current account I go on to the next check and let's say that you want to write a check to Dairy Gold. Now because we're not tracking Dairy Gold and the bills and invoices there's no outstanding bills from Dairy Gold. We're just going to do a cash payment. So I just go a new item. I say I come in here and I want to um, it's for whatever. Let's pick uh, feed again. So I'm writing a check to Dairy Gold for for feed. So I go save at the bottom. So I've done two payments there. One payment was against an, an outstanding bill that I'd already put in the computer, and the other one was just a cash payment. If I close out of there, you can see that I have my first two tr transactions in. So let's go and do a new receipt now. So I'll go new receipt, and let's do the let's lodge the money from the mill check. Remember that uh, the invoice we did, we raised an invoice to Glanbia at the end of December 2008. So logically this is the mill check that you get in January 2009. So open the date in the top left. I'm going to type in the 18th, say the 21st of the 1st, 2009. We're going to do it with the current account. Obviously with the bank you obviously have to pick, it, pick the current account that's relevant. So if I double click on the outstanding invoice at the bottom, it shoots up to the top. And you see the way I already have my, because I've put the invoice in, dated in December, I already have a breakdown of what this is all for. So all I have to do is just go save at the bottom. And now it's looking for another uh, receipt. So let's say that I'm going to receive money um, from somebody else. Let's say that you're going to um, receive money, say, from Lakeland Dairies. So I come in here again. We're not tracking Lakeland Dairies and bills and invoices. So it's just as a uh, this is a cash receipt from Lakeland Dairies, and let's say it doesn't really matter what we pick it for, but uh, let's say it's for cattle sales. Not a logical combination, but it doesn't really matter. So let's say we're receiving 1,200 euros. So again, there's no bills or invoices here. We're just uh, it was a cash receipt. Um, we got the money straight in. We're not going to bother with raising invoices. So if I save that. So there's an example of a receipt against an outstanding invoice and just a cash receipt. So we see we have two receipts in. So let's do the last type of transaction. So I go new and go new bank transfer. Um, and let's say that on the 15th of the 9th uh, I transferred from the current account. This would be your typical um, loan repayment. The John Deere loan with AIB. And then on those... 400 euro transferred on the 15th of the 9th from the current account to the John, Do John Deere loan account on that date. So I save that. Now obviously we can't do our loan accounts correctly if we don't put all the loans on. So if I hadn't made the effort to put the John Deere loan with AIB into the computer, I couldn't do this um, 
bank transfer correctly. So if I save that and it clears looking for more um, bank transfers during the month and I close out of that. So you can see straight away we have uh, an example of what we've done here is we've done a bill. If I come back to my bill, notice the way my bill is now fully paid. If I come into my invoice, my invoice is in as fully paid because we received that money from Plan B in January. And then if I come into my payments and receipts, my, uh, you can see all of the transactions that are going through the current account. Special transactions, I'm not actually going to show you an example of what special transactions are, are transactions that happen at the end of the accounts year. They're to do with depreciation and things like that, um, you know, keeping track of the changes in the balance sheet. A lot of farmers actually leave a lot of that stuff to their accountant and they work more towards um, management accounts and profit and loss rather than trying to keep a balance sheet. But if you want to do a balance sheet, it's, it's there, it can be done, no problem. So I'm going to leave this video now um, because I think that's enough to get you started on putting in transactions. The examples we've done are good examples and with the next video we're going to look at bank reconciliations and possibly get into reports as well.